Hello beautiful people. Hope everybody doing great. This video is about an unfamiliar place. You probably never heard of this place. We'll take you to the southeastern part of the Turkish city known as Gaziantep. Gaziantep is also part of the ancient Silk Road. Here how I came to Gaziantep. First I arrived in Istanbul, the biggest city in Turkey and then I stay overnight next day I took a domestic flight for an about uh, hour and a half journey to the Gaziantep this is southeastern Anatolian region partially known as a Mediterranean re uh, region a Syrian border Aleppo is not far away just a 90 kilometers drive from Gaziantep after the war breakout in Syria here in the city of Kilis became the biggest Syrian refugee camp because it's very near to Syria. Personally, I have seen lots of refugees, especially lots of children. However, I'm not near to the border. It is still 90 kilometers away. But uh, let's go to the town. I'm driving. I'm going to show you the city a little bit. Uh, let's start with my hotel, the hotel that I checked in. This is my rental car, Fiat, sedan. It's not an automatic car, it's a stick shift. The great thing is about hotel has a valid parking. Soon I enter inside the hotel, on the lobby. I realize already when I pass through security and I see the floor, white and black combination, and I see all the details it is really designed in a luxury way but compared with the price that I pay it was really a deal all the staircase the rail uh, chandelier everything has a, like a diamond and gold touches I mean you know what this kind of hotel if you go to any other places such as in Europe like Paris or Germany or even in New York those going to be big time expensive hotel because this hotel designed everything really in luxury way everything has a gold touch you know from the floor to the counter uh, the ceiling it looks like they did not left any places empty every place has something to see after check-in, i just curious. I go around the hotel, see where the staircases are. Uh, this is staircase this is beautiful. Uh, you can take this staircase up or you can take the elevator. But there's another staircases like this one. Oh, this one. Look at those rail. The glass and the gold touches and the marble floor. This is awesome. And there's a big chandelier on the top. I mean, this hotel has so many chandeliers everywhere. It is really a great hotel. When I went up to my room, I realized that uh, this room is actually junior suite, which is actually I didn't pay for it. But they, means the hotel manager, he upgraded me. So I would like to say thanks for that. Unfortunately, the hotel lobby bar is closed. Nobody in there. So the hotel uh, security guy told me there's a next door, there's another hotel, and the bar probably open. So when I came to this hotel, which is the next door of Hilton, this one was open. There was some uh, convention or something going on. I see lots of people in the big ballroom. So I sit in the lobby and uh, had some, a couple of beer which is a Turkish beer known as Afis, very famous. By the way, this hotel is totally contrast with the Hilton Hotel. It is more likely uh, contemporary. From the culinary perspective, Gaziantep is the capital of the gastronomy in the whole entire Turkey. And it's famous for its desserts. Gaziantep has its own specialties, such as Katmer, Knefe, 
Baden, and the best baklava can be found in Gaziantep. And my favorite dessert is this Katmar baklava, Fistikili Sharma, Balkamak, Baklavici, Celebulari, I believe. Uh, sorry for that, I do not know how to pronounce that. And uh, Furin Sutlak and Kinafe. I can eat this kind of dessert all day long. You know what? I found a pastry shop just across the street from the hotel. So I went there. When I saw this pastry, I already knew this is something special. I asked the guy, go ahead and give it to me. And you know, this is, tastes so good. It's a kind of taste like a Mexican dessert, like a cake called Tres Leches. It's a creamy inside, it's a cold, it has to be served cold. And I can eat all day long. Finally, I ended up with two pieces. Good morning everybody. I had a great sleep. I was really really tired and I wake up very hungry. I heard the breakfast buffet in this Hilton Hotel is the unbeatable best in the town. Since it's a Hilton property I have no doubt in my mind it should be good. Let's go and have some local Turkish breakfast. I'm kind of lost. I'm not sure where I have to go for my breakfast. Okay, look like in here. All right, I see cash register, restaurants, but it is totally empty. What's going on? I know last night they mentioned me which floor should be go for breakfast, but I probably didn't give him attention. Uh, well, uh, let's go upstairs and I'll find it there. If not, I'll ask someone. recommend come to the breakfast a little early so you don't miss the items. This is the lentil soup. Mm, spicy. I think it's a leek. I don't know what is it. It's a kind of cheese but it tastes weird. She's probably. Breakfast varieties is a lot, a lot of stuff in here. You know, there's figs with nuts, a honey, a fig marmalade, apple marmalade, cherry marmalade. Those are all organic. Uh, this honey, probably pure. I'm not sure if it is a pure or not, but it's, it tastes like 100%. I think the pig marmalade is uh, fantastic. Breakfast is awesome. Nice Hilton Hotel in Gaziantep. Very much in a deep, in a commercial zone. So all around you see business, business, business. I don't see any residential. Uh, if I'm looking at from my hotel upper floor to the city, it is a kind of uh, they remind me like a Cairo. Gaziantep is more dry weather. You don't find so much green like uh, we have seen in Trabzon. 
The traps are there's more mountain, more rain, more snow, so it is more green there. Here not much. Matter of fact, yesterday when I arrived in Gaziantep, there was a little rain. Generally it is a desert uh, setup. Driving in Gaziantep is uh, not easy as other cities that I have driven. It's a little difficult here. A lot of traffic, uh, a lot of places you cannot turn or you turn. You need to go miles and miles to come back to the point that you like to go. So that's uh, inconvenient. But I'm sure the local people know the secret. I do not know. I'm a foreigner, you know. I just see the highway sign and I follow. It was a great breakfast, now time to go to the downtown. Taking this boulevard and I saw this beautiful apartment complex with waterfall alongside of the road. This is probably one of the main boulevard in Gaziantep. I have arrived to the old town Gaziantep. It's a beautiful old charming town. It's a nice. I see not so many people in the street because of month of Ramadan. I see a lot of mosque, a minaret, a sound of azan. And I just realized I don't have Turkish lira. Not much. I need to change. So when I saw this bank right here, I say, hey, you know what? Let's go look for some Casa de Cambio, which is a money change place, you know. Go there and change the money either in a US dollar versus Turkish lira or maybe from euros to Turkish lira. Okay, I'm here in a money change. Uh, it's a nice place in Gaziantep. So, changing some euros. All right, thank you very much. Salam alaikum. Change my money. Now I'm gonna go. Kurt. Yeah. Kurt. Kurt? Yeah. Jewelry. Kurt. Kurt. He want me to buy some jewelry. <laughs> Salam. Okay, so money change is done. Wow, look at this. All these nuts, pistachios, all kind of varieties of nuts. Some of the nuts I even do not know what is it. Oh, this one is a, other one is a mixed nut, I guess. It's in a huge box, a full of box. Yeah, this one is a mixed nut. And those, yeah, this, 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 this one is a pistachios. You know, in Gaziantep, they grow lots of pistachios. I have seen pistachios selling in California in a supermarket, a small piece of bag, and it costs about $10, $12. And here, one kilo is $7, which is almost two pounds and a half. Wow, amazing. You know, one thing I notice in Turkey, you go to any city, any restaurants, mosque, hotel, home, anywhere, any shop, you see cats, cats, cats. Cats is a huge population in Turkey. It's almost 4.4 million cats. Most of them probably not a house pet. They are like stray cats. Oh, 
this is a good one, the chicken. Uh, then wrap it up in um, bread. And Turkish people, they call that durum. In Greece, they call souvlaki. So each country has a different thing. In America, you call wrap or burrito, right? Turkish people, they are very friendly. From the kids to the adult to the older people. Look at this guy. He waving the hand. Other guy also saying hello, welcome. It's a nice thing, you know. Since I have been walking in the street, I already found 20 stores of chandelier. Probably chandelier is very famous here. Gaziantep residential area. Walking in this way, all the way. I do not know where I'm going, but I'm looking forward to the main road. It's very nice, clean. Um, people are, see, neighbors talking each other. And everybody you see, they have something bag in their hand. They go for uh, shopping, fresh food, fresh vegetables. This is remind me almost like Morocco, like uh, some place in Casablanca. It is important when you're traveling in a country like Turkey or any Muslim country, do not focus or point your camera directly to the female pedestrian. It is not polite. Gaziantep known for copper products. Many stores you go here, you can find all kind of copper stuff. This guy, He's making this flower vase and he said he's already making this for past two days. So it is not easy when you see in the store a piece like this and it's a little pricey. That means behind it has a lot of labor, a lot of work. Oh, by the way, I asked this guy, hey, can I do a little video of your work? And he told me, yes, I just don't go there and focus my camera and start doing recording, you know. This is a metal engrave. So this kind of uh, job, he was telling me it will take about a week to complete the whole thing. So this is a totally handmade and it's a one unique piece. It cannot be duplicated the same. There will be always going to be difference. So this kind of product is a little pricey. Look at this big piece of for drink huge this is charcoal of course everybody know but what is this used for they use for hookah shisha for smoking you probably know what is a hookah is i found this huge store you can find here all the copper and brass made stuff from the dinner plate to cooking wire anything you name it even if it's for some special decoration piece for your home it's all copper and it's really heavy it's not a fake one and this guy told me that his store has been a long many many years and everything is here is all good quality and the real copper because you know some store uh, some places you see look like a copper because they color it a copper color but they're not a copper You see those colorful stuff hanging, look like a flower, no they're not, they're mushroom, they're bell pepper, they're all dry, dehydrated basically, for cooking purposes.
One great thing about Turkish people, they're family oriented people. When they open a business, their children working there, father, uncle, son, grandson, they're going to work there. Look at this boy. He's probably 13, 14 years old, probably 12. He know how to make these shoes. Uh, he's stitching it. Wow. found three museums, one of them for culinary museum. I want to see culinary museum. I never heard about there could be a culinary museum. Really? Let's go. I bought the ticket. It's a few dollars to get in. It's a first floor and second floor. So let's go and find out what they have. It seems it's a Turkish culinary, basically. Uh, they're using those a metal pot, uh, probably the old days, how they used to cook, uh, what kind of cookware they use, what kind of pot or pan they use. This is all about, and how they eat, where they eat. So this is gonna show you around. They stick with me, okay? This is a cooking wire cabinet. A cabinet means in Turkish dolabi. So yemek presmi kaplari dolabi means cabinet. Actually, my grandma used to have one of those. I remember that a long time ago. Modern cooking stoves versus the old one. This used to be run by kerosene, I believe. Very old fashioned tea maker. Used to cook tea in that. These are flour grinding stone or wheat grinding stone, I believe. Teapot, known as a chaydanik in Turkish. Here is some special recipes, especially from Gaziantep. This recipe looks like it's uh, kind of familiar. I have already tried. I tried this one on the left. Also this one. Oh, this is so good. I love that. But you know what? This one, the lamachan, I don't like that. It smells kind of funky. This is the best part of the recipes. Oh, all the meats, the lamb kebab mixed kebab with the vegetables some of them charred barbecued this is awesome you know if some people come in turkey and they go to eat hamburger you're doing a big mistake you have to try turkish food it is unbeatable the best in the world there's the kitchen huh kitchen museum never heard of it in my life i never thought about it there will be a museum for kitchen family together there's a round table there's a food there's a tea they are enjoying and the below the table there is a heater and that heater basically keeping you warm and they cover up their legs with a blanket you know this is reminding me just like in japan i used to live in japan when my early age i was young and i remember uh, when my friends comes, everybody we used to be in a round table sitting like this. We have our food on the top of the table and the blanket like this. We have a storage right there. And we are sitting in the floor, uh, usually called tatami. This is nothing different. It's similar culture you can find in a different places. It 
It's about 3.30 in the afternoon and you know, I'm so hungry. Let's go in this restaurant. I seen this beautiful lamb kebab. Okay, so I'm gonna order some duro. So basically, let's go inside and see if I can order some lamb duro. I got the menu, but the menu is in Turkish, not in English. Uh, but you know, it, it's understandable, easily to understand that uh, if it is chicken or if it is a lamb. So I order some lamb duro and now they're preparing for me. I'm excited and I'm really hungry. I think they didn't give me lamb, they give me chicken. The problem is that people, when communication is uh, very poor, they can make a mistake. Let's see what happens. But I'm not going to eat the chicken. I want whatever I order for it. The sandwich that I asked for. I asked for a lamb sandwich, not the chicken. People make mistakes, especially when a foreigner come, they don't understand English. You ask chicken, they give you beef. You ask beef, they give you chicken. That's why it is important when they're talking. I think one thing I figured out in Turkish people, they make a decision quick. They ask you and they think they understand. And they right away go ahead and order that one. They're not like a ask you twice, okay, are you looking for this one to make sure they can give you the right service. I spoke to the manager and told him that I ordered for lamb, but you guys gave it to me, a chicken. And he said, no problem, he will change it for me. I would like to pay him also for the chicken, but he said, no need to pay. Uh, we make a mistake and we're going to go ahead and give it to you, the one that you ordered for it. Actually, this is a great service. I was so shocked. Just good. Chili. Gaziantep area is the most Turkish people eat chili here. In Istanbul, we only can find hot sauce. Very few restaurants carry that. Here, every restaurant you have a, not a hot sauce, but chili powder, chili pickles. If you're looking for something spicy, chili hot food, Gaziantep is for you. I also feel a um, little bit shy because I made the drama. I don't want a chicken, I want a meat. I didn't want to do that. But I also want to let them know that you need to give attention to your customer, what they're asking for. So they fixed the problem. Now they offer me tea. This restaurant, they do not sell tea. They do not sell coffee. But they got it from outside the store, another store across the street, and they brought it from there. Delivery here to you. Just for me. To make me feel better. So that's good. This video is about to be end. Please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get a notification of my new post. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.